I am linking it on the website right now. And then it'll, and it's on Facebook Live as well. Mm -hmm. So if I go to your um, web page. All right, we're live. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Teresa Abel at the Abel Contemporary Gallery, just outside of Madison in Stoughton, Wisconsin. And I'm pleased to be joined today with Pranav Sud from Brooklyn, New York. And we are here to talk about Pranav's wonderful new show, I Am Absolutely Absolute. This exhibition will be in the gallery through September 4th. The first thing we're going to do is look at a video walkthrough of Pranav's show, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the artist. Then we're going to talk to Pranav about some of the specific pieces in the exhibition, and then we'll open it up for a question and answer session at the very end. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us, Pranav. Hi, everyone. Hi, Teresa. All right, and we are also here with Lauren Miller, who's the assistant gallery director, and she will be doing all of the audio video for us. Thank you. Lauren. So Pranav Sud was born in Punjab, India, and currently resides in Brooklyn, New York. Sud creates bold, large-scale acrylic paintings inspired by equal parts Western pop art and op art. Byzantine mosaics, and traditional Indian miniature painting. Sud received a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the Government College Chandigarh, India, and an MFA in painting from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. In 2019, Sud was included in the prestigious Wisconsin Triennial Group Exhibition at the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art in Madison, Wisconsin, where we became aware of his work. We shortly after included him in a group exhibition called Ancient Modern that we had at the gallery in 2020. Since graduating in 2020, Sud's solo shows include Life is About Love and Love is Complicated that was shown here at Able Contemporary as well as the Al Ringling Theater Gallery in 2020. His other solo show, A Little Thing Called Love, was at the Edgewood Art College and the UW-Madison in 2020 and 2019. Sud works primarily with acrylic, gouache, and watercolors, both on canvas and paper. He depicts his unconscious psychosocial experiences in the themes of his expanded development of empathy, emotional turmoil and turbulence, and new challenges faced within the expansive dimensions of maintaining intentionally durable, loving relationship. In his current show, I Am Absolutely Absolute, each painting details a chapter of a hero's journey toward personal and spiritual completion through abstracted narratives. Profoundly optimistic in their persistence in the face of travails and tragedies, Sud's protagonists grapple with perpetual existential struggles. Through painstakingly rendered pattern and line, Sud develops a complex iconography to explore romantic and familial relationships, notions of identity and self, and spiritual and philosophical trials with humor, innuendo, metaphor, emphasizing the need for devotion and determination. Thanks for joining us, Pranav. Hello, Teresa. It's been an honor. That's, it's, it's a wonderful show. Um, and we were so delighted you were able to join us at the opening, which was, which was a great treat. And now you're back in Brooklyn. Apparently it's a furnace there. Yes, it's so hot today. <laughs> but you're in your studio yes. and uh, you have a fan. And so hopefully some water and. Um... Yes. So Pranav, I wanna jump right in the, the, Everything that you do has such purpose. Every character has a story to tell and um, they're so beautiful and complex. So I thought it would be just really, really lovely to just jump in and start to talk about a number of these pieces. And this is the piece that's right behind me. It's called Who Persists Get 
gets gifts. And it's one of my personal favorite pieces in the show. Um, so tell us about this painting. This, uh, this is my favorite too, because it's like yellow. I love yellow paintings and the paintings which have more yellow in it. And personally, I did this in 2020. And this is like really dear to me because like it helped me uh, during like tough times in New York. Uh, this painting was inspired during like a bonfire. I was sitting at with my friends and I was just looking at these like insects going into the fire, uh, dying. And I was like, these insects are like so stupid that they don't understand that they die. They don't learn from other insects. And I was like, maybe I am kind of the same person. Like I'm the insect like them because so everybody told me that art world and art being an artist is going to be a tough road ahead. And I still wanted to do it. So I created the symbol of a guy holding electricity bare hand and like jumping in a puddle of water, bare feet, knowing that he's going to get electrified. But he's just so passionate, just like those insects to be be with that fire. So I created this painting and it inspires me every single day to keep at it and stay in New York with full strength. It's really great. Um, and and I love it. This seems like a new um, thing in your work, the animated water with the little faces and the splashes. And um, what do the birds represent? Um, I sometimes watch like Netflix and like YouTube videos. And uh, I think I was watching the, this like cartoons, like Looney Tunes and like Tom and Jerry. But like, you know, like when some in cartoons, they hit like somebody on the head and you see like birds around. So yeah. it's, it's that same, like this birds are flying ahead of this like person who's like working really hard, build, holding like this big brick on the shoulders, walking yeah. through like, through this like big pond or like a river water structure where he feels like he needs courage. And I call him ballsy because he needs <laughs> that courage to like lift that weight of passion and keep at it and stay persistent. That's why it's called who persists get gifts. Because if you need gifts from life, you need, need to be persistent. And this painting, I feel like shows that in a hypnotic way. Yeah. So when you um, duplicate characters like, like you have in this one, I don't know if I should point at the screen or the painting behind me, um, is, is it meant to, is that the same character? It is the same character. It's like uh, it's like a comic storyline. So on one side, the idea of this character described in a way, in an emphasized way. Like I really uh, loved looking at these like Egyptian paintings, you know, like reading symbols and trying to make your own story out of it. So on like because as I'm from India and I read from left to right, so I create these bigger characters. So like you start reading, you understand this character and then go to the right side and you see the same character in a different mood or the water splash is different, but he's like more mellow like as if he's high on something. And then, <laughs> and then like the guy who is holding that big geometric uh, weird brick on the shoulder is also seems high because you need to be a little high on passion to like actually go through this hard painstaking real life that brings you like different kind of emotions every day to deal with it and stay at it. So, so it's, it's kind of like a comic kind of situation and it's sort of like even kids and like adults, everybody can like just enjoy and make their own stories. But I have my own story when I paint them. Well, and I have, some, you know, there's so much we could talk about. Um, from what you just said, like one, I love the fact that um, they're very, very personal to you. And that's very clear that there is a story to be said, but but they are really completely left wide open for the viewer also to bring their own ideas and impressions onto them. I, I can't explain why I think that that happens when artists do that, but it clearly happens in your work and people connect with them and it's really successful. And then I also love the way that they seem sort of universal and ancient and modern. And like you mentioned, Egyptian hieroglyphics. And then and then I think about Indian miniature painting, um, medieval manuscripts, but also when you talk about cartoons and pop art and 
um, it's so great to bring all those things together in a way that's like fun and beautiful and there's humor to it, but it's also very, very sophisticated. And then little things that you do, like the character, uh, the same character when he's on the table or where, the building or whatever he's on, where he, just just doing what you did with his eyelids, you know that he's, like you said, he's he's relaxed or he's on something. Like it's that little, little thing that you did that is, is so, um, gives him so much character. It's great. Yeah, like I feel like, little things, uh, little changes in the painting makes like when I feel like if you have the painting in your house and then you see, you have to see it every single day. And when there are like little changes, once you come out, come back from work tired and you see it sit behind or like in front of the painting, then you just find like a little surprise every single time because you never notice because there are like so many patterns and colors that you don't render or comprehend every single detail in the first viewing so it just gives you like little packets of surprises every single time you view it so i feel it really interesting for myself because i find it interesting and and then there's just and just technically there's fascinating things happening with the pattern and the way that you it's i feel like it's become kind of a signature of your work the pattern changes um it's it's again, a really, really intelligent way that you mix all these patterns and make them, but they're unified. But then there's kind of this ombre effect where the color changes from light to dark. Um, it must be incredibly time consuming um, because you're having to change the color every time you're painting square. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it takes time, but uh, there's no like definite uh, plan. Like it just comes intuitive and like, it's like chemistry. I, I, I feel like it's like maths or chemistry. It's like a mathematics of color and then chemistry of intuition. Like you just like plan things or paint something on it based on what you did last day. And every time I come to my studio with like different mood, I come up with like, okay, this is how it's gonna go so that I can create tension or a depth. But then this outlines create this like unified feeling in the whole painting that you feel like it's stick figure is like very flat, but at the same time, the colors try to like push themselves and like create that undefined depth in the painting. And that makes you feel like, you are alive or there's something is alive but not alive like it's a different feeling and i feel like that's really interesting to have like uh yeah like the colors play their own role inside those like black bold outlines yeah and um i feel like you told me once that it's you use the same color palette in every painting just in different in different proportions, is that right? Yes, uh, I feel like color, like color and color palette and color combinations used in different, com like in a different combination or maybe like in different percentages in a painting creates a different feeling. Like, you know, like colors have their own visual strengths and like wavelengths and they emit emotions. Like, uh, like for example, like the op art, like Bridget Riley paintings, like you, I have seen in like one in Chicago when I was in grad school in Wisconsin. And uh, I saw that there's like whole energy, there's like fighting the color to be present in the space. And I was seeing it and I was like, kind of like getting repelled. I was like, this is so strong that I can't see it for a long time. <laughs> and then I thought like, why not? I try to harness that energy and like make it like, I have the same energy, but it's like so controlled that like the viewer or like myself, like when I'm painting, I can just like stay inside and never wants to go out. And it's like, a, uh, so then I started like creating this like whole world of my own patterns and colors and characters. And it, it's like kind of universal and which I really like, like it should represent everyone on this planet. Yeah, that's just great. Um, well, oh, great. Um, you read my mind, Lauren. Um, so this piece is called He's Seen It All. Um, yes. And then this piece is, I think it's 24 by 24 inches. Is that right? Yes. Um, 
but and it's interesting because even even when the scale gets a little smaller, they're just they're just as powerful. So um, tell us tell us about what he's seen. <laughs> Uh, it's it's it was like a day in New York when everything was happening uh, against what I was willing to do, and I was like feeling a little anxious and like you know like New York it was like when I moved I was like really enthusiastic and I was like but after like few months that I was like struggling with like what to do like it was pandemic how to make connections and like how to meet people where should I show my work and. There were so many things happening together and I was getting like a little anxious and I was like just sitting, uh, talking home and with my girlfriend at that time and just like holding my heart. And I was like, this is like pounding. I never knew about anxiousness. Like I always knew nervousness, but I never felt anxious like in my life. And I was just sitting and I realized that it is just me who is just thinking about like this whole thing, like that everything is tough. Like I made it here, I will go through. And I realized it's just like, I have a candle on my head, which is like, which is calm because there's no wind around, but when there's a wind, then the, it will get, it can blow up and like blow off. And maybe it's just the me inside who is blowing that candle off. So I created this like guy holding, or like holding hands on the heart and like candle on the head, like burning like in a nice way and there's a tiger a lion who is like sitting calmly like lions are shown as like pride but they were like he's sitting behind that yogic character uh calmly growling and then on the right side this guy who's the kind of the same guy but blowing the same candle off himself so it's like just calm down just calm down it, it's like a reminder to stay calm and in every situation of life, everything will gonna work out, and it did after. <laughs> That's so great. Um, I feel like these kind of lion or cat characters have been showing up a lot in your work. Um, so uh, are, are they danger, or is it just they're that pride? They're oh. Angels. Okay. They, these characters started as an angel in my painting, and then like it. I felt like they also lion and if you want to rule something you have to believe that you are a king and I, I heard that in one of the Instagram reels somebody was telling that like lion is a king because he believes he is a king he's not the biggest animal in the jungle or the fastest or the cleverest but still he's the king because he believes he's a king and sometimes he's all like you will see like lions always resting and I was like trying to associate paintings or the idea of like myself, like like a lion or like different animals. I always bring like different animals in my painting to represent certain mood or ideas or philosophy. So lion is dangerous, but he's calm in this painting. And like, but like growling, he's like, I'm not okay. I don't want to be like this, but like I will because you want me to. Yeah. Like the guy is in control. Right, because he's calm. Because he's calm, he's like, everything will work out. Let's calm. stay calm. Let's see what happens. Yeah, trust and in me. In the original painting, if you see in in our original, like the colors are so bright in my painting that the camera can't reflect. And I think in this painting on the right side with like orange and green lines, it's really vibrant. It's like really uh, fighting against that mellow color of her character that like you start feeling like, yeah, there's an energy or even the background on yellow and white and gray, it's just like creates a different kind of depth in the real painting. And yeah. it's yeah. just like the colors are fighting with each other to represent like the anxiousness, but at the same time, calmness, like just stay calm, just the mood of that guy, focus on that guy. Focus on that guy. What's with the little um, yellow? Uh, furry eyeball thing happening uh it's it's like a a grass a, a thing or a nature's part like the guy is sitting on a pedestal or like a like a like hexagonal structure yeah and 
there's like a little piece of grass who is like looking at the guy like everything in the painting is focusing on that guy who's like trying to become and the eyes are closed and he is in smile he's trying to like just protect that little candle on the head which is like melting and he just don't want it to just blow up like he wants the fire burning and he's trying to calm himself and everything around and everybody is yeah. like just helping to him to focus or the viewer to focus like everything is in the center yeah it's so interesting that everything becomes uh an animated character practically you know whether it's water or grass and you know just by putting these eyes or these illusion to eyes and and then it's almost like you're making everything sentient or something it's it's very yeah. interesting um thank you it's great um so i'm looking at the the original and then i'm looking at the screen yeah they're great and that that yellow and the white and the gray it just vibrates um yeah, it, it, there's like a point in the painting where the yellow merges with the gray and creates like this highlight in the in the background of that like fire thing yeah and I love it. It's like so beautiful like, to me. I appreciate my paintings because like I don't know how they happen. And like when I'm painting, I feel like I am trying to like see things what comes out of the canvas. And when it happens, but it's in my head and it happens there, I just admire it. And I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful. And I need to like <laughs> push it to a different strength and try with like different colors and something in the next painting. So I, right. I just love like how they come out that's so great hey lauren let's move on oh here perfect um this piece is called you know better yourself um pranav yeah yeah it's uh you know like in life you we hold on to things we we feel like some things are very special and dear to us like like idea of success or idea of a goal or like even little things like my paintbrush, my colors, my canvas, my painting, my life, my my friends, my family, my little one I have. Like these are so important. And I, I, I was like just thinking one day about like these things add so much pressure. And we I should be a person who can like give up something easily. Like if I don't, if my phone is stolen or like like something i shouldn't be worried at that point i should be like okay it's gone it's what i can do if i can do something i should otherwise i should be calm and in this painting where this like a weird snake kind of thing is like holding on to the big frame of the painting yeah and then the guy who have like different limbs and like kind of like agitating like in a shaking way but seems like static but it feels like the hands are also moving and he's like smiling with three eyes and like the tongue is out he's like a little flirty or something and then the girl is who he's, the girl is like trying to like break the thread or or the necklace so i was just thinking about like like a necklace is really precious like my my wife now her lean was telling me about the beautiful pearl necklace and she was like this, i lost it somewhere and she was worried and i was like it will come if it is there otherwise it's gone, just don't worry, we'll buy another one. And I was like, she should just like let the pearls go, break it, just calm down. It's There's no point in getting nervous. And that's what I feel. I don't want to get nervous. And every single painting is describing that in a happy way. You're like, let me calm down and stay focused on what I'm doing. That's, I know better myself than you do. So. <laughs> you know better yourself. Um, yeah, so the guy with all the arms and all the legs, is he agitating like or is he distracting her? He's distracting her, but like by shaking and like showing like jumping and like shaking hands and like moving his legs, like dancing, like kind of flirting outside the big box of a building she's standing in. And, yeah. and he's trying to like, there's like a little pattern which I thought like looks like a disco lights or in a painting it feels like a disco lights because it's like so pointy and the colors are like so contrasting in a way 
that you feel like he's dancing in a little small box outside the building where she is standing and she realized that she shouldn't be worried about that necklace which she lost. So she is like just taking every single bead and throwing it outside the box and trying to be free like that guy. Yeah, that's funny. Or, but they are not like, they are like love stories, but I also think like love stories and career parallelly. So like, there's a love story and then there's a passion I follow like to be a painter and then it's about like when I get nervous about the passion of career then I need somebody to dance in front of me to say that it's like just relax and happy just stay happy like come on this side let's change the mood or something and yeah. I have to be that person myself so I'm telling myself that you are better yourself inside to the physical self or everyone like it's like a little depth of layer I'm trying to like bring into the paintings yeah and I love you often put the characters there in buildings but they're they're you know they would be giants in their buildings yes but you have to you know put it all so it's all symbolic do you do the colors that you choose have have symbolic meanings as well uh yes uh like, I remember like in my high school, I was studying about like color as in like symbols of color, like green is like a symbol of like fertility or like happiness or fruitfulness. And uh, so I painted this painting. I wanted this painting to be glowing green and the, the border of this painting is like a fluorescent green and the girl is also like fluorescent green. So I feel like in the real painting, that painting glows in a different way. And the, even the guy seems like it's made with like all flowers and colors. So in the real painting is like just the whole painting glows in a different way. And so like, but all the colors are mostly about like the balance of like a warm tone of reds and then like mostly blue and green and then creating a different kind of con a calming contrast. So, so that you just focus on the three bold big characters in the painting. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, uh... Good. This is another one, and this is a piece that I think is really terrific as well. Well, I, they're all so good, but um, and this also seems like uh, there a mishap happened. Somebody dropped something, and they're having to deal with. <laughs> There's yeah. It's a lot of emotions. Yeah. Going on. it's called "Rise Up Empty Handed." I think like nobody cries in my painting. Everybody's like, if there's like a little droplet, let's see. it's like a happy, happy tear. Happy yeah. tears, like of realization or understanding. They comes from the idea of like vulnerability, but then like they moves to an idea of like enlightenment or happiness within yourself. And, and this, is, this painting is also more like comic, comic -y in that way you can read it in different sections or compartments of a painting. It's called, I think it's called a Rise Up Empty Handed. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I was, it's, it's just like a really amazing story. I have like stories for every single painting. I and, know, it's great. This, so, so what is she, what it, what is, so what, are, what is she holding? Is it? So uh, one day I was like just standing outside after the rain, looking at this like reflection of light, like street light. And I was just like gawking at it. And I was like, just trying to like think about that reflection and like perspective and stuff like artsy stuff. And then this guy on a bicycle just moved through that puddle. And I just came out of that like scene inside my head. So, I, and then I was also reading this book and about like Zen stories. And I realized there was a, there was a story about this uh, monk who was like holding a bucket of water and just gawking at this like moon and then that bucket was broken and then she realized that if she was just holding on to the reflection but the moon is was up there so I used that narrative and the realization what I had I realized that like moon in the morning you don't see moon or during eclipse too, you don't see moon or but the moon still stays there and the truth always light outside, whatever you are thinking in your head, whatever you believe in, 
it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. The truth is always out there, no matter how strongly you believe at something. And what? And then this like lady in the center, she's like green, like you know when you uh, like fell your phone or something, like you're holding a glass of water, you it fell and there's like a little shock or something inside. So you feel like panicky that you that thing is gone, and then you realize that the moon is up there. Like the truth is always out. Like I was holding onto a, onto a surreal thing. That's, and you know, it's so just, when you look at those faces, it's just the most subtle changes in the eyes and the shapes of the mouths. So she, the character in the center, she really does look like, oh God, I dropped my bucket of water or whatever. Okay. Um, just from the little changes in her mouth. But when you're doing these pieces and you come up and you have this narrative, I'm assuming that with the detail of these pieces, you must have to sketch the whole thing out first. Is the whole composition drawn out? Uh, I can show you my sketchbook. I have it here. Uh, oh, that's it's like, yeah. uh, they're like a little, like it's just like this sketch right here. Like, uh, I don't know if it's clear, but it's just like a, I sketch it out in a simple pencil, simple thing. There's no gradation or okay. colors or anything. I just sketch it on the canvas and and stuff like because it takes so much time. So it helps me to like change the sketch on the way. And, and the patterns and colors are just responsive on the painting, during the painting. I don't select the colors or test out colors. I just like intuitively select based on what I'm doing. And everything happens in the head in a weird way. I don't know how to explain it, but I just see colors in my head and try to like finish that puzzle of painting. And so then- really just the responding. The, the color part is spontaneous, even though it looks so organized. It seems very really as if like it's like illustrated, but they are not. They just like like when I'm like biking or going somewhere in a bus, like I just like sit with me inside my head, meditate on the idea of like sketch. I I can like see the sketch in my head in a meditative way, and then like I keep like adding colors and like trying to mix different colors and see like, and I remember all the color combination, how two colors react like from the previous painting. So I try it out and change and like, it's a, it's, it's a weird game which I play with my head and I it <laughs> passes time good, but also helps me to like paint faster because the pattern takes so much time. So if I know what I'm doing, I'll come to the studio, I have like few options then I can decide and like play with instantly. So yeah, it, it's just like, yeah, yeah. So this is the last piece I want to talk about from the show. You are all I long for. And this is a larger piece again. Um, and there's a lot going on. It's like three by four feet painting. Yeah. It's one of my special, uh, like favorite paintings. It's, it's really bright. It's so bright. I love it. <laughs> it's so bright. It's stunning. Yeah. It's, um, she's all I long for. It's, I painted this just before getting married. Like it was the last painting I did before getting married. And I was so excited to meet, meet Harleen finally after like a year long distance. And I was like, okay. So I just created this like painting of like happiness and like that everything works out well, whatever you are up to, it will end up with the fruit you always wanted. And I always wanted to be in New York and she's coming soon. So it feels like this, it's great. Everything is happening for each other. All the yeah. directors are just helping. Yeah, everybody is so happy. It, it is like the union painting. It's about yeah. like, stay, it's everything is good. It's like the climax of the series. Yeah. And then what are the snakes doing? It's like a, it's like a snake and a bird. Like in my painting, snakes are very like, happy or like important characters, like people, like a character which is like protective and like, it's like positive. And then snake is like bringing a little bead to a sunflower and the sunflower is like holding the beads inside the, you know, like the painting we just like talked about that painting yeah. with the girl inside is the same 
building. But in that painting, the girl was like throwing the beads out of the building, outside the box. And here the flyer is like keeping it inside in a nice way. So it's like, now it's time to like actually embrace everything. And that girl in the background flying with a cape coming. And then there's like a union of this hand, like kind of like about to clap or something. Yeah. It's like everybody's happy everybody's, for each other. That's so great. Um, you know, I think when you, um, I think about all your influences. And so when you were doing your undergraduate degree in India, you did study Indian miniature painting for a little bit, right? Yes, I started with like a really amazing artist in India, uh, workshops, and yeah, traditional and so, style. You know, sometimes, and you know, and then it's such an important, um, part of the art history of India. So, you know, when you started to um, use some of those pictorial devices and ways of storing, tell, telling stories in your own work, do you feel like it just kind of, was it really intentional? Did you think I'm gonna reference this or did it just start to come through naturally? Uh. I just started with a fun, like I, I, whenever I love, like learn something, I try to use it in my own way. And I started with one painting it leads to another and another. And like, I find like these like things which were disturbing me as an artist, like who were like, okay, I can improve this. I can switch this. And it was like a DJ with a keyboard and like, you are just playing with the color tones and like characters and the intensity or something. And I was like, let's, find like a new combination to do something and like and every time I was trying to like describe what I was what was going through in my life and it helped me like to stay focused of paint doing the painting and because like this painting took might took like 15 to 20 days and I work almost like every day all day seven days a week and so staying with the painting makes it thrilling like you can just play around and like see and stick with the painting and I think the idea from like Indian miniatures gave me that patience. And then I used that quality of patience to find my own voice in the paintings I'm doing now. It's been like 10 years, 10 years of being studied like Indian miniatures and I'm pushing it further and further, trying, trying to push everything further and further. Yeah, it's great. Um, and then let's, so the, sh the title of the show is I am absolutely absolute. And you came up with that after the whole series was finished, right? Yes. And so tell us about that title. Uh, it's really uh, interesting. I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely absolute. Like a nice way to put it is like, uh, I'm absolutely absolute is, a, is an emotion, a belief system based on, if you look at the series, it's a belief system that keeps you, keeps me motivated and persistent throughout the ups and downs of life, the journey I'm going through so that I can thrive in love, success and passion, which I follow. And, but the idea of this, like I wanted a title to represent that everything is complete and it starts with a problem, ends with a success. Like whatever, it starts with everything happening, happens in happiness and ends with happiness. And it's all about passion, love and success. And I was like uh, drinking like absolute vodka and I was like seeing that bottle and I was like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Like pure as absolute is the should be the title like I realize that that everything's gonna be fine eventually and you, you just have to do what you love have passion for and focus on the success of it yeah so you so you moved to New York Brooklyn specifically in the in the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic I mean you had been planning to earlier but you just said I'm gonna go and so now it's been a couple of years right yes it's been Exactly two years okay. yesterday. Um, and it's getting better though. I mean, I mean, it sounds like it was hard, but it's always hard. I, I don't know anyone who moved to New York who said, and that was just the easiest move I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's very interesting, it's adventurous. Like you feel more emotion than anywhere in the world. And I, I, I loved it. And I, I would like stay here as long as I can. Yeah. And, and remind me, you'd never really traveled or spent much time there. You just knew that it was right for you. Or am I remembering that incorrectly? No, uh, like in 2019, like I never traveled anywhere in the world, like in, in US, like yeah. but I was like saving up money for New York. And I had this like one month, I found like this artist, uh, Nicholas Gognini in Harlem. He is a sculptor. And I wanted like an internship. So I told him like, I can help you work your, on your pieces, whatever you need, I can for free. I just want to, I don't want to like come to New York with no clue. I will come every day, work six hours, uh, five days a week. And then I will like walk around in New York and you just give me an idea where to go. And I came here, went to like every single rural, every single city or neighborhood, just to like meet people, make friends or like see art and like check the vibe. So that I know when I'm moving in to, after my graduation, I know where to move and it was peak of pandemic. It was like, uh, I graduated in May, 2020, and I wanted to move afterwards right away, but there was no travel for New York. And they, I got the news that they're opening on August 1st. And I booked everything in the last minute and moved here on August 3rd, and within a week. And I found like a studio, apartment, everything. And I just moved with like two months of rent. And I was, like, I was like, I will see what happens. <laughs> and so, I mean, when you first moved to the, the city was in a in a really different state and then you got to see it sort of come back to life. And it's, it's, it was like a standing train. And then I just hop on and it was standing and like just catching up the pace. And yeah, it was like it's a that was advantage kind of. Yeah. And now and then you just got married. Got married and great congratulations. Thank you. And it's it feels beautiful. And now now everything is like calm down as I have like shows coming up and I have connections, I have friends, I have things to do every day beside of my studio. People are coming out. Food is amazing. Uh, yeah, New York is what I hoped for and it is exactly it is like like movies yeah <laughs> it's great well you know the work is um you know we've been it's it's beautiful it's complex it's it says something about the times we're living in there's just there's so much about it that's really marvelous but also you know you just have really such positive great energy and um I think that comes through in the work as well. And it's really, it's such a pleasure to be featuring the pieces right now. And it's just a great, great show. Um, so um, uh, Lauren, I don't know if you have any questions after listening to this conversation or if anyone has chimed in with any questions. Yeah, I'm not seeing any come up online. And actually your question about the sketching was my question that I was so astutely reserving for this occasion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this has just been really great. And I so enjoy uh, hearing Pranav talk about this work. And I just, I've never met someone who is so authentically positive in a way that doesn't come off as um, like overly saccharine or something. Like it is, you are truly one of a kind, Pranav. It's really incredible to be able to uh, work with your work. It's really something. Yeah. It's true. I think sometimes in the arts, um, it's really easy for people to be cynical um, and think that that cynicism is kind of a coolness or something. Um, but yeah, you're, you, I think Pranav, you said to me once that someone at, you were showing your work somewhere and someone said that you were, um, what, gosh, what was the word? Like, um, aggressively optimistic, I think was aggressively the Aggressively optimistic. Yeah. And I don't know who, whoever said that, like, bravo to you. Cause I think it's a great, cause it's kind of true. It's, uh, I was reading the meaning of, I was like researching on the idea of like aggressively optimistic. I, was, I told him like, if I ever write a book, 
the title would be aggressively optimistic, but uh, I was like researching about the idea, but the idea is like, it's not just about optimism. It's mostly about like going through different kinds of emotions and then deciding about optimism. And I feel like this whole idea of like absolutely, absolute is also about like going through a journey and then deciding like everything gonna be okay. So it's like, it's just not like simply optimistic. It's like sticking with mm-hmm. optimism in any course of life. So thank you. Yeah. And I feel like we're all kind of in, and the people like you were in Madison for a relative, I mean, in terms of your life, a relatively short period of time when you were studying, but you know, um, you left a real mark here and people are so excited about your work. And I feel like um, the arts community here feels invested in your journey now. And at the opening, your professors came here and people are just, uh, people who've collected your work and are following what you're doing. And we all want to continue to watch this hero's journey. So <laughs> bravo to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so and Pranav, I don't know if you have any last things you want to say before we sign off. I would, I would say thank you so much, Teresa and Lauren, for making this happen. It's been an honor and I loved uh, working with the gallery from like last three years. And thank you so much coming to the Wisconsin Triennial and looking at my work. And yeah. that changed the whole course of my life. And I feel like it's really great bonding. And there's like a nice, like we have a nice talk. Like it's easy to talk to you. And I love it here. I, I love like what we are doing. And thank you so much audience for listening. And yeah. thank you. It's great. And, you know, you've become so quickly such an important part of our stable of artists. You're such a great fit here. And it just feels like such a great relationship. And I'm so excited to see where that, as that continues. So um, the Pranav show, I am absolutely absolute, is in the gallery. Every piece is also, you can see it online and you can watch the video walkthrough again. It shows up through September 4th. We also have two other really outstanding shows. There is a painting invitational. And then in our um, art space gallery number five, Keith Kaziak has an installation called The Paradox of Things. Um, But really, if you're in the area and you're able to see the show, the pieces are stunning. Please come and visit the gallery. We're open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to five, but the whole show is available online. Um, Thanks, Pranav. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, it's great to talk to you and we'll talk soon. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.